What's going on guys? I know it's been a while since I made a video here. Uh, I've been putting some miles on her go girl. Made some trips with it. I'm up to uh, 1800 miles now. Post all my modifications and repairs. You can go back and look at my videos and see where I had uh, some internal engine problems with the bike but that was over a thousand miles ago she has been flawless ever since um, i did do that abs mod and uh, most of the things that are on the bike now are in my accessory videos i'll, I'll link uh a link uh down in the description links to those videos if you want to go back and catch up on all the accessories that are on the whole bike ABS mod is a separate video on that. I think the only thing I've added since those videos has been one of those nice CNC clear oil filter covers. Kind of a novelty item, but kind of cool and the same. I have added the Motos Adventure Tractionator Adventure tires. I have about 800 miles on these now, at the front and the rear. Love those over the stock. They are wearing a little bit quicker than I anticipated, but I have been riding them fairly aggressively. So I guess it is what it is when it comes to that. The other thing I've done since my last videos, I did change the rear spring again. I had the, uh, the heavy Top Gun spring in there, I think it was the 9.4 kilogram per, whatever the measurement is, and uh, that was a little too stiff for me, so I did switch it out for the 8.1. Much, much better for my weight and size. And I also upgraded the uh, front springs to Progressive. Just the uh, Progressive springs, they market them for the Gen 2s, but they also fit these Gen 3s. A lot of guys have done the swap out. I also got my old dragon on there, Tail of the Dragon. Some of you guys may know where that is, what it is. If not, Google it, Tail of the Dragon. Cool area, lots of cool off-roading down there. Went down there a couple weeks ago with a friend. We tore it up with our KLRs, and it was a good time. But today's video is about the clutch switch mod bypass the bypass mod everybody seems to be talking about and i admit i was a little skeptical at first on what it can do and i'll go into a little bit more detail on what the modification seems to have done to my bike i've already done it i reversed everything just so i could show how easily it can be done now there are plug and play um bypass things you can buy through 3d cycle parts he has those on his website i will include a link in the description here but really all you're doing is bypassing the switch to let the ec new ecu know that the clutch is pulled in basically tricking it into thinking the clutch is being pulled in all the time if you want to try try it before doing any kind of uh um, permanent modification I cut a simple paper clip unplug that terminal push this paper clip in I kind of propped it up on these wires so it wouldn't short out and just gave it a try and after just a few miles I decided to go permanent and like I said you could buy the plug-and-play kits you can simply just cut the wires and twist them together. You can connect them together, butt connect them together, whatever you want. But what I decided to do is just go with a simple fuse. So this, this is it. This is all I need for this modification. A fuse, zip tie, a little bit of tape, and some side cuts. So here's the stock fuse. I'll just lay them down there next to it. It's just a simple blade fuse, mini blade fuse. That one there is what they come like, come you know how they come from uh, whatever manufacturer you're buying from, and then that one is one I use the side cuts to trim down so it would fit in the connector. One zip tie just to hold the connector up out of the way, and a little bit of tape to make it water 
resistant. Those plugs do need to be water resistant because there is current that runs down through there. So just a quick description here. I'll put you in a tripod so I have my hands free. So this is your clutch bypass, clutch uh, switch. It's, it's how the ECU knows when the clutch is pulled in or not. It's as simple as pressing on this little tab underneath and unplugging. As you can see, it's just a simple two-bladed plug. Two wires, the switch makes contact, di disengages contact, that's its job. So like I said, you could do a, a simple little bypass just to try it. I cut a piece of paper clip, shoved in there. I kind of propped it up underneath my wires here like that so nothing would get grounded out. And I went for a ride just to try it out. The bike performs so much better with this bypass. So I'm doing away with my little temporary bypass. I'm going to plug in my little blade fuse. Simple, this I can't really get it to focus too well, but it's a simple 5 amp fuse. You can do this several different ways. I mean, essentially all you're doing is you're just making this a permanent circuit. Just try to get it in there as far as I can. And what this has done, and you probably read many posts about it, it has eliminated the fuel cut that Kawasaki seems to think it needed from the factory. Why Kawasaki made it that way, nobody knows. But when you're on and off the throttle, these things have a pretty abrupt fuel cut to them. And for some reason, doing this little bypass has eliminated that fuel cut. So you can see, I just wrapped the end with some tape. We're going to cut another piece of tape to wrap around. This has also helped with shifting, probably due, due to the, the fuel cut. To me, it feels like it shifts smoother, way smoother. I mean, a lot, way noticeable. For the guys that like to synchronize shift, like without using your clutch, it's made that way more easier and smooth it's hard to explain exactly what it does to the bike and i can't tell you this the specs of it exactly what it does but to me it feels like it changes the fuel mapping of the bike altogether so it takes away that fuel cut so as you can see here i just wrapped her up good it's got the five amp five amp uh, blade fuse in there Wrapped her up with tape. And all I'm gonna do is kind of tuck it in right there in that connector. Um, it's just smoothed out the bike as a whole. It, it really is hard to explain. I highly recommend everybody at least try the little temporary bypass to try it, to see if you like it. I think most people will. Another thing I notice is it seems like the idle comes down faster. So usually when you come to a stop, at least on my bike, you come to a stop, you pull the clutch in, the idle likes to stay up around 17, 1800 RPM. And then as you're sitting there with the clutch pulled in, it will eventually come down. With it this way, as soon as you come to the stop, the idle is already low. The first couple times it threw me for a loop because I thought that the uh, the bike was dying, but it wasn't. It was the idle was so low that it 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 just sounded that way. But it's where it needs to be. I looked down at my tack. I do have a Trail Tech tack. It was like 1450, 1500 RPM, exactly where it's supposed to be. So it seems like the idle comes down quicker. I'll just show you nice and neat you know you can leave this open 
because there's literally no current going through there anymore. There is a, um, I did meter that wire. I think it is a sensing wire. According to the, uh, according to the wiring diagram, it is a wire that comes off of uh, the rectifier. I think I metered it at five volts. So it must be some kind of sensing wire for the ECU. So hence why it's not just a ground. A lot of guys think it's just a ground. You kind of see everything looks, I got a couple extra zip ties on here for my heated grips and such, but you know, everything's nice and neat and tucked away. Um, so anyway, yeah, I think you definitely need to keep out water tight, water resistant anyway, nothing's ever going to be water tight. And, uh, that's it. I mean, that's the whole thing. I'm just going to take a little bit of extra time to explain what it's done to the bike, at least for me. Um, so I've done about 60 miles or so on it, trying to take it on all kinds of different conditions, off-road, on-road, around town, and it just performs so much better all the way around. It's, it's really hard to explain, but it's just a better all-around ride now. The throttle is, you have more modulation in your throttle and you don't have that abrupt on and off throttle. It's so much smoother. You do get less engine braking. Some guys may not like that, but I thought that throttle cut gave it way too much engine braking to begin with. So I like the fact that there's less engine braking, especially on off-road. Um, if you need more engine braking, kick it down another gear. It seemed to be about as simple as that. Um, shifting smoother, like I said, up and down, you can synchronize shift or, uh, without, uh, using a clutch. That's smoother. If that's your thing, um, the throttle, uh, the idle seems to be more moderate instead of being buzzy all the time. You do have to give it a little more throttle on takeoffs. Now it no longer has that little surge as you're letting out on the clutch. So first couple times it may take, take some getting used to, but it does seem like you have to give it a little more throttle to take off. No big deal. I kind of like it better now the way it is after I got used to it again. And uh, no more of that surginess. No more of that on-off throttle and it hesitates and surges. It, it really is, it almost feels like you gave the bike a tune. Like you sent it out and you had your ECU flashed. And he gave it a, a semi-professional tune. Like it totally is a different beast. And I was one of these guys. I was skeptical. I was like, "This is bull crap." You know, that's it's not it's not going to help the bike. But the more more posts I read from the members on the pages, they said, "Give it a try." So I gave it a try, and wow, I mean, it really is unbelievable how much it changes the temperament of the bike. So I highly recommend everybody give it a try. Do the temporary one, do the permanent one, you know, order the, uh, the plug and play bypass from uh, 3D cycles, but either way, give it a shot. I, I think you'll be shocked on how, how much nicer the bike performs and handles and rides now. So I think that's all I got for today. You seen how simple that was, you know, it's, it's, it's wow. It, it's such a simple thing. I, I ran that five blade, that five amp fuse. Like I said, I went for a ride today, 60 miles. Tried to give it all kinds of conditions, and the five five amp fuse held up nice. Probably don't have to use a fuse. I'm sure that system is fused at some point, but it was it was easy. You I, you could use a jumper wire, you could use a fuse. I just used the fuse because it was easy. It made sense. You've seen how simple that was. Trim the fuse down, plug it in, put a little tape on it, tie it up, done. So that's all I got, guys. Go try it out. I You'll be shocked. Like I said, I was a skeptic. I'm shocked. I thought I was going to do some kind of little bypass switch on it where I could, oh, I'll click it on, on and off like my ABS mod, you know, when I want it. I, I don't need to go back to the old way. This is the way it's going to stay. So give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think. I will have more videos coming. I know I've been a little lax lately. Took a couple trips on the KLR and on my other bike. Um, I am going to do, uh, got an idea for a video coming up on um, 
on like uh, new adventure riding, dual sport riding people might enjoy it. Because I'm kind of new to this whole deal. Done nothing but street ride for 20 some years. Just picked this up in December and now I'm getting into the dual sport riding. And I think I've got my feet wet pretty good. We, we went down to Tennessee, North Carolina a couple weekends ago. We got into some stuff and it was a good time. I learned a lot. And I think I want to share some of uh, what I learned. I should have took the camera with me, but I didn't. It was just a weekend trip with a buddy and we needed to catch up. It had been a couple years since we've been on a trip together. So I didn't need to throw cameras in, in everybody's face for that trip. But I think I am going to do a little uh, ride-along video and talk about what I've learned in the last few months on getting into this new sport. And having a good time doing it. And as far as the bike goes, I think I'm done with mods except for that crappy seat. Where's that? There we go. That seat. Something's got to be done. I hate to spend money on it, but I can't do much more than 100 miles on that thing. I'm sure a lot of you are the same way. But... That would probably be the next thing I change on it. And really probably the last. I, I can't really think of anything else I need to do. So, alright guys. Take it easy. Let me know what you think of this mod. I think you'll love it. Be safe out there. Bye.